Hey everyone, welcome to day 228 of our Bible in a Year Plus podcast. Today we're in the book of Jeremiah again, and we're going to be talking about the deep impact of God's message and God's word on humanity. In uh, the Cold War years, Harlan Popoff was imprisoned by the communists for his faith. He had been in prison for five years, and one day he noticed another prisoner rolling cigarettes in paper that was torn out of a Bible. Here's how he tells the story. One day I noticed that Stoyle, the man whose bed was next to mine, had something in his hands. It looked like a little book. Stoyle was tearing a page out of the book in which to roll a cigarette. To my astonishment, I saw that it was a New Testament. I had not seen a scripture portion for five years. Instinctively, I grabbed it from Stoyle as tears flowed down my cheeks. Stoyle, I asked, where did you get this book? He said, when we were transferred here from the first barracks area, I found it in a trash can. I said, Stoyle, please give me the book. No, he answered firmly. I'm reading it. He grabbed it from my hands. But I knew he wanted the thin paper only for use as cigarette paper. I couldn't bear the thought of God's word being used as cigarette paper. Stoyle, I will give you all the money I have for the book. Then I held it. God's word. I wept before the men and they turned their heads so as not to embarrass me. For five years I had starved physically, but I had starved even more spiritually. And I can tell you, the spiritual hunger is more painful than the physical. God's word had been my inseparable daily companion. Then, abruptly, I had been cut off from it for five years. I offered this prisoner all my money for the New Testament, but I would have given him my arm or leg if he had asked for it. That's what God's word meant to me then. And now, he was so thrilled to have a copy of the New Testament that he hurried up and memorized 47 chapters of it before the guards came and took it away. Today, I'm going to read about the amazing impact God's Word has on the human heart. And we're looking in Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1, in the King James Version of the Bible with updated vocabulary. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and see, he worked a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? declares the Lord. See, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up, to pull down, to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turns from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. If it does evil in my sight, so that it does not obey my voice, then I will repent of the good which I said I would benefit them. Now therefore go, speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus declares the Lord, See, I frame evil against you and devise a scheme against you. Return now every one from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. And they said, There's no hope, but we will walk after our own schemes, and we will each one do the imagination of his evil heart. Therefore, thus declares the Lord, Ask now among the Gentiles who has heard such things. The virgin of Israel has done a very horrible thing. Will a man leave the snow of Lebanon, which comes from the rock of the field? Or shall the cold flowing waters that come from another place be forsaken? Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in paths in a way not cleared out, to make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing. Everyone who passes by shall be astonished and shake his head. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them my back and not the face in the day of their calamity." Then they said, Come, and let us devise schemes against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, and let us strike him with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. Give heed to me, O Lord, and listen to the voice of those who contend with me. Shall evil be repaid for good? For they have dug a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before you to speak good for them, and to turn away your wrath from them. 
Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine, and pour out their blood by the force of the sword, and let their wives be bereaved of their children, and be widows, and let their men be put to death, let their young men be killed by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses, when you shall bring a troop suddenly upon them, for they have dug a pit to take me, and hid snares for my feet. Yet, Lord, you know all their counsel against me to kill me. Do not forgive their iniquity, neither blot out their sin from your sight, but let them be overthrown before you. Deal with them in the time of your anger. Chapter 19. Thus declares the Lord, go and get a potter's earthen bottle and take of the elders of the people and of the elders of the priests and go forth into the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is by the entry of the east gate and proclaim there the words that I shall tell you and say, Hear the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus declares the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. See, I will bring evil upon this place, which whoever hears his ears shall tingle because they have forsaken me and have estranged this place and have burned incense in it unto other gods whom neither they nor their fathers have known nor the kings of Judah and have filled this place with the blood of innocents. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burned offerings unto Baal, which I did not command nor spoke it, neither did it come into my mind. Therefore, see, the days come declares the Lord that this place shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. And I will make void the council of Judah and Jerusalem in this place, and I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies and by the hands of those who seek their lives and their corpses. I will give for meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. And I will make this city desolate and a hissing. Everyone who passes by shall be astonished and hiss because of all the plagues of it. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat every one the flesh of his friend in the siege and pressure with which their enemies and those who seek their lives shall pressure them. Then you shall break the bottle in the sight of the men who go with you, and you shall say to them, Thus declares the Lord of hosts, Even so I will break these people and this city as one breaks a potter's vessel, so that it cannot be made whole again, and they shall bury them in Tophet till there is no place to bury. Thus I will do unto this place, declares the Lord, and to the inhabitants of it, and even make this city as Tophet. And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as the place of Tophet, because of all the houses upon whose roofs they have burned incense unto all the host of heaven, and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods." Then Jeremiah came from Tophet, where the Lord had sent him to prophesy, and he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, Thus declares the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, See, I will bring upon this city, upon all her towns, all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks, that they might not hear my words. Chapter 20. Now Pasher, the son of Immer, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Pasher struck Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. And it came to pass on the next day that Pasher brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. And then Jeremiah said to him, The Lord has not called your name Pasher, but Magor Misabib, for thus declares the Lord. See, I will make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and your eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon, and shall kill them with the sword. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of the city, and all the labors of it, and all the precious things of it, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah. I will give into the hand of their enemy, which shall spoil them and take them them and carry them to Babylon. And you, Pasher, and all who dwell in your house shall go into captivity, and you shall come to Babylon, and there you shall die, and shall be buried there, you and all your friends to whom you have prophesied lies. O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. For since I spoke, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a mocking daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. 
But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with holding it back, and I could not halt. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Report, they say, and we will report it. All my familiars watch for my halting, saying, Perhaps he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one. Therefore my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. But, O Lord of hosts, who tries the righteous, and sees the reins and the heart, let me see your revenge on them, for unto you I have opened my cause. Sing unto the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he has delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Cursed is the day in which I was born. Do not let the day in which my mother bore me be blessed. Cursed is the man who brought news to my father, saying, A male child is born unto you, making him very glad. And let that man be as the cities which the Lord overthrew and did not repent, and let him hear the cry in the morning and the shouting at noontide, because he did not kill me from the womb, or that my mother might have been my grave, and her womb to be always great with me. Why did I come forth out of the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame? Chapter 21 the word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, the king Zedekiah, whom, when king Zedekiah sent unto him Pasher, the son of Melchiah, and Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, the priest, saying, Inquire, I ask you of the Lord for us, for Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, makes war against us. If so be that the Lord will deal with us according to his wondrous works, that he may go up from us. Then Jeremiah said to them, Thus shall you say to Zedekiah, Thus declares the Lord God of Israel, See, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, with which you fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans who besiege you outside the walls, and I will assemble them into the middle of the city, and I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand, with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath, and I will strike the inhabitants of the city, both man and beast. They shall die of a great pestilence. And afterwards, says the Lord, Lord. I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants, and the people, and such as are left in this city from the plague, from the sword, from the famine, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those who seek their life. And he shall strike them with the edge of the sword. He shall not spare them, neither have pity nor have mercy. And unto these people you shall say, Thus declares the Lord, See, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. He who remains in this city shall die by the sword, and by the famine, and by the plague. But he who goes out and falls into the hands of the Chaldeans who besiege you, he shall live, and his life shall be to him for a plunder. For I have set my face against this city for evil and not for good, declares the Lord. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. And concerning the house of the king of Judah, say, Hear the word of the Lord. O house of David, thus declares the Lord, execute judgment in the morning, deliver him who is spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor, lest my fury go out like fire and burn so that none can extinguish it because of the evil of your doings. See, I am against you, O inhabitant of the valley and rock of the plain, declares the Lord, who say, who shall come down against us or who shall enter in our habitations? But I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings says the Lord, and I will kindle a fire in the forest thereof, and it shall devour all things around it. And that concludes Jeremiah chapter 21. Chapter 18. This is the famous, our favorite uh, part of Jeremiah for many people, the famous potter's house metaphor. And here the Lord is uh, taking Jeremiah to a potter's house. There's the wheel, uh, the spinning wheel. He puts the clay on the wheel. He begins to make a vessel. There's a problem with the vessel, so he smashes it down and starts all over again. And the Lord says, At what instant I speak concerning a nation to pull it down and destroy it? If that nation turns from their evil, if they repent, then the Lord says, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do to them. And oppositely, when he says that he is going to build up a, a nation and plant it 
If it does evil, then he's going to smash it down and bring forth a vessel of judgment. This is so great because um, it shows that the Lord is working with us in real time. Even though the Lord is eternal, and in a sense, there is no succession of time, no sequence of time to him, he is somehow miraculously, we don't know how, he is somehow working with us all in real time. And we do not just seem to make choices, we are actually making choices that affect the outcomes that the Lord has in mind for us. And when we change our choices, he changes his choices. And that's just amazing. And it reminds us, if you have made some terrible decisions in your life, and the Lord has decided that he's going to make a certain kind of vessel uh, out of you on his spinning wheel, and you decide that you're now going to do things God's way. You're going to follow the Lord. If you do that, then the Lord takes all of the bad things he was going to bring into your life, smashes them down, reorganizes them into something good for your life. And so this is a little bit like God's plan B for your life. He did have one thing in mind, but you changed. And since you changed, now he's going to bring plan B. And we love the God of second chances. And this is what the potter's house metaphor indicates, that God will give you a second chance. I love that. Chapter 18, verses 21 through 23. This is Jeremiah's imprecation. When we were in the Psalms, we talked about in episode 147, we talked about the imprecatory Psalms, um, asking the Lord to bring a curse on somebody, telling the Lord that you hate someone. And we're reminded here that you're not allowed to do that, right? This is what Jeremiah is doing. He says, therefore, deliver up their children to the famine. Let their children starve and pour out their blood by the force of the sword. Kill the, kill the children. And let their wives be bereaved of their children. Let the, let the women folk cry because their children are gone. Let them be widows because now their husbands are gone. And let their men be put to death. And let their young men be killed by the sword in battle. And let a cry come from their houses. And don't forgive their iniquity. That is imprecation. It's praying a curse. It's praying a, a, an evil thing, a hard thing on people. And we learn from the Old Testament that this was appropriate for Old Testament people because God was trying to set up a holy land in which his agenda would be established by holy people and the holy people were supposed to run off, scare off, or kill off anybody that was uh, contradictory to God's agenda. That was okay for them, but there's nothing like that for us. God does not have a holy land here in the United States or any other part of the world. He does not have holy people who are supposed to scare off, drive off, or kill off the people who are upsetting his agenda for this land. There's nothing like that in the New Testament. We are told that we have to love our enemies. We have to bless the people who persecute us. And so what was okay for Jeremiah and the Psalms and other places in the Old Testament is not okay for us. But we see that that's the case in Jeremiah's day. Chapter 19, verses 4 through 15, we have the broken bottle metaphor where Jeremiah takes the elders of the priests and the prophets. He takes them out and he breaks the bottle and he says, this breaking of the bottle is what's going to happen to your nation. Your nation is going to be broken. In chapter 19, verse 9, we have the prophecy of cannibalism. Um, I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat everyone the flesh of his friend in the siege and pressure uh, with which their enemies shall pressure them. Uh, remember, this was predicted in Deuteronomy 28, verses 54 through 57, that this day would come. We saw one case study of that, one instance of that, in 2 Kings 6, 28 through 29, when uh, the ten northern tribes, the nation of Israel, was under siege, and we actually uh, had a story of cannibalism. And in Lamentations chapter 4, verse 10, as Jeremiah walks around looking at the ruins of Jerusalem, he says that they did indeed cannibalize one another horrible. And so this is talked about in chapter 19, verse 9. In chapter 20, verse 1, this fellow named Pasher, he's a leading priest. He gets angry at Jeremiah for his prophecies, particularly that about the broken bottle in the valley of Hinnom. And so he puts Jeremiah in stocks. And these stocks in those days uh, 
put your head and your hands and your feet in a way that you're kind of doubled over, sort of like a crunch and a very uncomfortable. It is not just bondage. It's, it's actually torment. And so Jeremiah had to go in those stocks for a day and then he was released. In chapter 20, verse 7, there's that question again, does God lie to us? Same as we talked about in chapter 15, verse 18. And no, God will never lie to you. God who cannot lie made his promises before the world began. He cannot lie. But if you get the timing wrong, you may think that God is lying to you when he is not. The Lord will never lie to you. But just know your happy ending is at the end of the story, not somewhere in the middle. And you have to bear that in mind. In chapter 20, verse 9, this is so great. Um, Jeremiah has been put in stocks and he's being persecuted. The people want to kill him for what he has said. So he decides, I, I will not make mention of the Lord anymore. He says, then I said, I will not make mention of the Lord nor speak anymore in his name. But then his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with holding it back and I could not halt. I had to speak for the Lord. And I love this because it's like what we started with in the beginning of the episode. The, the Lord's message to humanity is so powerful and it just keeps chipping away, chipping away, chipping away at our own hearts and at the hearts of others. And we have to listen. We just have to listen. And so I'm glad that you are listening to the words of the Lord. Chapter 20, verses 14 through 18. This is Jeremiah's greatest discouragement. And he expresses here that he wishes he had been killed in the womb, that he had never been born, but that the Lord had killed him in the womb and his mother would be pregnant, you know, great with child forever, and he would never be delivered. This is his pain. And, you know, we don't want to overlook the importance of that in the text. But one thing that happens here, which is so interesting, is that he is talking about himself as the real I, the real personality in the womb. And it reminds us that the real I exists in the womb before birth. And that's why we are opposed to abortion. It's the real person in the womb. The real personality, the real I exists before the child is even delivered. And we talked about that when we were dealing with the 119th Psalm as well. So you remember that. In chapter 21, verses 1 through 6, Jeremiah tells King Zedekiah's messengers that even the royals will soon be killed, so nobody escapes from Babylonian captivity. Chapter 21, verse 9, is God's instruction for the population of Judah to surrender to captivity without a fight. The Lord says, if you try to run away, or if you try to hold out against the Babylonian army, you're going to be killed. But if you surrender without a fight, then I am going to bless you and favor you. You have to accept the consequences uh, for what you've done wrong. This, of course, is what Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego did. You accept the consequences. If the Lord brings judgment on you, don't hate it. Don't fight against it. It's like, all right, well, this is where the Lord has me. I accept the consequences. Now I cast myself into the loving and merciful hands of the Lord and see what he wants to do with me. And that's what you do if you come to a place in your life where the consequences of judgment cannot be averted. You, you throw yourself on uh, the mercy of the Lord's court and see what he's going to do. And the Lord did indeed have mercy on those who surrendered to his will. All right, so what should be our great life lesson today? Chapter 20, verse 9, Jeremiah said, I'm just not going to talk about the word of God anymore. It's too much trouble. But then it was like a fire in his bones and he couldn't keep quiet. And so he went back to his prophetic ministry. The Bible, God's message to humanity, has a way of knocking at your heart's door, knocking and calling and chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. Uh, and it happens in our hearts over and over again in ways that are so healing when we obey and so unpleasant when we don't obey. So which is it with you? When we rebel against God, that chipping away, the knocking, the calling is annoying and painful and we hate it. But the thing to do is not to ignore it, but to fall in line with it, to consent to it, to give up and understand this is God. And we're so glad that he keeps chipping away. It's for our own good. And you know when the real calamity starts? This is the real calamity. 
when the knocking and the calling and the chipping away stops. Then you know you are in big, big trouble. Don't ever come to that day. The Lord is knocking. The Lord is calling. The Lord is chipping away. And you have to say yes. So that should be our prayer right now, right? We are going to thank the Lord for chipping away at us. Chipping away. We're going to thank him for that little whisper. That, that fire in the bones that just won't stop. We're going to thank him for it. And we're going to freshly commit to say yes to him right now in everything he wants us to do. So I hope you'll pray in your heart as I pray out loud, okay? Father God, we thank you so much for that whisper, that fire in our bones, that constant chipping away, which is so healing for us when we need it and so unpleasant when we resist it. Lord, we're telling you today, thank you for the chipping away. Thank you for not giving up on us. And today, we want to commit to you that we're saying yes, we are listening. And if you're chipping away at something, this is the day when we say yes. And we say it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, okay, God bless you. Thank you again for joining me for day 228 of our Bible in a Year Plus podcast. And I sure hope I get to see you again soon. Bye-bye.